Hello everybody. Hope you all are doing well and hope you all are staying safe. This is Dimple here again welcoming you all to today's session on Android Framework Components. Today I'll be showing you all uh, the more details about Android Interface Definition Language AIDL. So in my previous video I had actually explained that from A11 onwards the HIDL has been replaced by AIDL. So before uh, dealing with uh, uh, that I just thought uh, let us first understand what is this AIDL what is the need of it how exactly AIDL works so that is why I have done this session so uh, to begin with we will see what is AIDL AIDL is nothing but it's an Android interface definition language it is similar to other interface definition languages okay so to for one process to communicate with another process this interface definition language is very very important so it allows you to define the programming interface that both the client and the service agree upon in order to communicate with each other using inter process communication okay so uh, yeah we all know in Android the different processes communicate through one another through IPC mechanism mechanism inter process communication so AIDL is also one type of inter process communication so uh, imagine I have a process here and this process uh, should uh, access memory of another process so I have one process process a process a should access memory of another process but in Android this is not easy one process cannot access the memory of another process that is the concept of sandboxing okay so uh, we cannot directly access the memory so what we have to do is this process has to be uh, decomposed into objects and this objects will be further decomposed into its primitive types which can be understood by the operating system so since we cannot access directly the memory of another process what we are doing here the object whichever has to be communicated or the object which has to be shared with another process that object is decomposed into its primitive types to the type so that the operating system here the Android operating system can understand that okay this process is called as marshalling so that across the boundary we can communicate with another process at the other end what operating system will do it will gather all these primitive types and it will again build the object out of it okay this is called as demarshalling so this object whichever this process had to send to another process is now received by this process so these two process are communicating now so this is the uh, actual thing of how this works uh, how the exchange of objects or sharing data between one process to another process via AIDL happens so this uh, code okay whatever code we have to write to the, uh, do this marshalling and demarshalling is very very tedious okay so that's why AIDL will generate all that code for us so I hope uh, you all are clear about uh, the process and why exactly AIDL is required so AIDL will auto generate all this important uh, primitive types for us so that we can communicate easily from the client to the server or from one process to another process now what are the steps to create AIDL so there are three different steps basically to create AIDL first if I am a client and I want to uh, communicate with a server so if I am a camera application and I want to communicate with my gallery because all the photos I capture in my uh, through my camera app I am storing in my gallery so I need to access the memory of my gallery application so here the camera app will become the client application and the gallery will become the server okay so uh, when the client needs to communicate with a server the client has to create 
create a dot aidl file in the dot aidl file what do we exactly define we define so this aidl file is just an interface so interface we just declare the methods the return types and the uh, parameters the number of parameters the types we do not define the entire method we just declare so whatever methods we need to use we will define in uh, declare in that dot aidl file so client has to create this dot aidl file after that the service uh, so after this first step what aidl will do for us is that it will generate a stub okay this stub uh, will act like an interface so it's it's acts like a bridge between the client and the server so all the communication will happen through this stub so that stub we have to implement in our server okay the third step is now this server should expose the interface to the clients so we'll see the steps again uh, i will show you all i have written one sample application i will show you all exactly how it works so for now to make this more clear so i am a client and i want to communicate with my server so what do i do i first generate a dot aidl file so android studio will generate the stub for us so this stub will act like a bridge between the client and the server next what will happen aidl um, using the methods everything we have defined in this uh aidl file the stub will be generated i will show you all exactly how it looks and now the server the server has to implement this stub because this is the stub which is uh, acting as a, a communicating point between the client and the server so client is already connected to the stub through aidl file but how the server will be connected to the stub a server has to implement the stub as a binder okay so this server will implement the stub and it will create an instance of binder now this aidl it will call a bind service method the client will call the bind service method to uh, connect to the binder that time what will happen on service connected will be called in on service connected once the client calls the on service connected method the binder object will be passed or the binder will be returned to this particular method so this binder will have all the necessary information which has to be uh, given back to the client so uh, once the client calls on service connected the binder object will be returned so here the task is done the client uh, requested some information and the server is giving that information via the uh, binder which is uh, returned through on service connected that's it so uh, i have written a sample code we will go through the code now uh here my main aim is i have just written a sample application which is having uh, two edit uh, text so when i give two uh, numbers when i input two numbers and when i uh, click on the third button here i have uh, included a button when i click on this button it will uh, send me the addition of two numbers okay the addition result it will output so this is just the ui here i'm not concentrating on the ui and the compilation of the app i just want to show you all uh, how exactly this works so what i have to do this is the first step second step is i have to go to my application i have to give right click new and aidl file i have to choose okay so i have to choose aidl file and once we uh, choose aidl file a uh, dot aidl file will be generated so here i have named it as i my calculator so always it starts with capital i and remaining you can give any name of your choice so here i have given the aidl file name as my calculator because it's doing addition for me see this is an interface okay so we have to only define or we have to only declare the method and signature we will not exactly define what has to be done inside this so this is my client i am creating aidl as my client in my client i just give integer addition and integer x comma integer y i am trying addition of two integers that's all after i create this file after some time this android studio will generate another file i my calculator dot java for me 
the same file name which I have given for AIDL, the same file name with .java extension is created. Okay, so there we can actually see the stub. So this stub is very very important, which is acting like a bridge between the client and the server. So uh, whatever code I'm showing y'all uh, here is my client. Okay, so I can write two different applications, client and server communicating. But uh, here I just want to explain how the binder works, all those things. So to make it simple, I have written the client and the service in my same application. So this will act as my client, and this uh, .java file which is generated, it will be under this generated build generated folder. Inside that you can see with the same name dot java file okay so this is the stub which is extending the binder and implementing my AIDL so this stub is nothing but it's a binder now and it has all the methods which I have declared in my AIDL so uh, this code is very very tedious to write so all this code is generated for us through AIDL okay so now this stub is ready next what we have to do we have to create a new service so we have to go to app new and we can create a new service okay so I have already created and I have named it as my service dot Java now I have AIDL in my client and my stub is generated for me now to communicate this stub should be made use by both server and the client right because stub is common interface so how I will make use of that stub I am creating the instance of that stub okay your M binder is instance of the stub so this is my AIDL name okay so my calculator and dot stub I have to use because I'm using the stub which is generated from the client so client name dot stub and this is an instance of the binder or instance of the stub okay this can be anything here I have given as M binder and I'm creating new instance okay so here I'm creating new instance of the stub and inside that I'm defining what has to be done I can do anything here here for example addition function as so I am returning x plus y if I do multiplication I can return x into y this is your choice you can do anything the important thing is the server now should make use of the stub somehow so we are creating an instance of the stub here and that is nothing but m binder so whenever the client will call the server this m binder has to be returned so when the client will call the server on bind method of the server will be called okay this on bind is very very important uh, when on bind is called the instance the binder instance will be returned okay so I hope this is clear when the binder instance is returned the client will get the uh, result so what we did till now I will just press up simple things first we have to create a dot AIDL file which is acting as a client and I'm just declaring some method next a stub will be generated for us inside this build generated folder and this stub I have to make use in my service so what I will do I have to create a new instance of that particular stub and I'm using the same name as my client because the client has generated the stub so I in order to communicate back to the client I have to use the same stub I'm creating an instance of M binder so when the client will call the bind method from the client okay bind service on bind of the server will be called so this M binder whatever was created will be returned back to the client now let's go to our main activity in this main activity we have to call bind service so we all know right uh, bind service what it will do uh, when I call this bind service from the client to the server this on bind method in the server will be called so in in my bind service I have to create an instance of intent and this is instance of service connection whenever we call bind service we have to create this service connection before that here uh, I have just created instance of this client and it's calling it as my calculator okay one object you can think my calculator is one object of my AI 
ideal now now what will happen service connection i have to uh, create a new service connection so when i create call this service connection on service connected method will be automatically generated for you and you have to override that particular method okay so uh, this my calculator is what it's nothing but it's an object which i created in my client this my calculator and i have to use i my calculator that is the client name client is using the stub as interface so why i have to use this stub as interface because whatever binder is returned from this service that binder has to be typecasted to this uh, uh, it has to be typecasted to the type which is understood by the client so to do that type casting we use this stub as interface method and this binder whatever is present here i mean whatever is returned from here it will be passed to this function here as a second parameter that one i am using here so that's all and when i wa don't want to communicate with my uh, server anymore i will call this on service disconnected method so here always remember we have to use stub as interface just to do the type casting work and this is the binder which is returned from my server okay so uh, that's all about the aidl uh, same thing we can write in two different applications but we have to make sure in my service i'm using the client name correctly so the package name and the file names has to be correct because uh, it has to communicate through the same interface right so that's all these are the three steps first step is i create my aidl file second step in my service i have to use this stub okay now this stub is nothing but it's a binary binder okay bridge in simple words bridge between the client and the server so i am making use of this particular stub and once i make use of this stub what i have to do in my client activity client's main activity i have to call the service connection method and i have to use that stub as interface okay uh, this what it is doing this is to ensure that all the data is just understood by the client okay so this was a simple example i try to explain in in a way which is as simple as possible so that's all about ai deal this was the basics um coming to today's uh, question what is database uh, which is used in android okay so in android uh, to store everything all the data we always use sqlite database it's an open source uh, relational database and because why we use sqlite is because it's serverless transactional and self contained okay one of the example when you are storing all the contacts we have to store it in a database right so for that purpose we all use sqlite database so with that uh, we come to an end to today's session i hope it was informative i hope you all understood the concept of aidl i try to explain in simplest way as possible so thanks everyone for watching uh, i'll come up with another topic on aidl in my next session so until then everyone take care stay home stay safe bye